Hello, I'm Stephen Coprins, Managing Partner of Coprins Law LLC. And today I'm here to discuss a cautionary tale in which an undisclosed agency file size limit sunk an offeror's competitive proposal. In this case, an offeror's proposal was properly rejected as late because the proposal exceeded the agency's email file size limit. In a recent bid protest decision highlighting the importance of contractors to check email file size limits from agency solicitations, the GAO held that a small business's proposal was late because the emails transmitting the proposal exceeded 10 megabytes, even though the solicitation in question didn't mention a file size limit. The GAO's decision in Washington Coast Corporation, which is docketed at number B413809, if you'd like to look that up on the GAO's website, involved a VA solicitation for executive driver transportation services. The solicitation was apparently classified as an acquisition of commercial items and obtained FAR Clause 52212-1, which is the Instructions to Offers Commercial Items Clause. The solicitation required the proposals be submitted by email to the contracting officer and contracting specialist. The solicitation didn't mention any limit on the sizes of files that could be emailed to the agency. Proposals were due on September 16, 2016 at 2, 2 o'clock p.m. On September 16th, that's the due date, at 1.19 p.m., Washington Coach Corporation attempted to send its proposal by email to the two VA email addresses listed in the solicitation. WCC's email apparently exceeded 10 megabytes in size. WCC's emails were not received by the VA contracting officer or contracting specialist. At 1.55 p.m., this is five minutes now before uh, the proposal deadline, WCC called the VA in an attempt to confirm the receipt of the proposal, but WCC only received a voicemail message. After the two o'clock deadline, WCC made three subsequent attempts to call the VA. WCC also sent emails to the contracting officer and contracting specialist requesting confirmation that the proposal had been received. The VA contracting officer and contracting specialist did receive these requests for confirmation and forwarded them to the VA's IT department to determine whether a proposal had actually been received from WCC. The IT department looked into it and after several days, the IT department concluded that the emails had been sent but had not been received, quote, at the local exchange level because they exceeded the size limit which is allowed by VA policy. That is because they exceeded 10 megabytes. The VA determined that WC's proposal was late because it had not been received before the proposal deadline. The VA also determined that none of the exceptions set forth in FAR 52.2121, that's that commercial items clause, applied to WCC's situation. So the VA declined to evaluate WCC's supposedly late proposal. Well, WCC didn't like that. They filed a GAO protest uh, challenging the VA's decision to exclude the proposal. WCC argued that it submitted its proposal to the correct email addresses identified in the solicitation before that two o'clock deadline. WCC also pointed out that the solicitation didn't say anything about a 10 megabyte file size limit. The GAO took a look at the protest and wrote that, quote, it is an offeror's responsibility to deliver its proposal to the proper place at the proper time. Now, proposals received after the exact time specified ordinarily are deemed late and ordinarily cannot be considered. The GAO explained that while the rule may seem harsh, it alleviates confusion, ensures equal treatment of all offerers, and prevents one offerer from obtaining a competitive advantage over its com uh, competitors by submitting a proposal later than those competitors. In keeping with general principles, GAO said, we view it as an offeror's responsibility when transmitting its proposal electronically to ensure the proposal's timely delivery by transmitting the proposal sufficiently in advance of the time set for receipt of proposals to allow for timely receipt by the agency. In other words, GAO is saying, don't submit at the last minute. That's, that's what GAO is saying in, in fancy terms. Now in that regard, GAO said it's an offeror's responsibility to ensure that an electronically submitted proposal is received by, not just submitted to, the appropriate agency email address prior to the time set for closing. Important quote there, received by, not just submitted to, the appropriate agency email address prior to the deadline. Now, GAO did address that FAR clause I mentioned, FAR 52212-1, which was incorporated in the solicitation. And that clause does provide an important exception under which sometimes electronically submitted proposals may be considered even if they would otherwise be deemed late. The exception under that clause applies 
where the contracting officer determines that accepting the late proposal would not unduly delay the acquisition and, importantly, the proposal was received at the initial point of entry to the government infrastructure not later than 5 o'clock p.m. one working day prior to the date specified for receipt of offers. Unfortunately for WCC, as that last uh, sentence uh, suggests, the exception didn't apply because WCC's proposal was not received at the initial point of entry by 5 o'clock p.m., the date before proposals were due. Instead, WCC submitted its proposal about 40 minutes before the final deadline, 2 o'clock p.m. So the GAO uh, found that the FAR exception didn't apply and denied WCC's protest. The Washington Coach Corporation case is a cautionary tale for contractors. As the GAO's uh, decision demonstrates, an agency may be able to reject as late an electronically submitted proposal if the file size is too large, even if the solicitation didn't specifically identify any size limits. In an age where proposals are increasingly being submitted by electronic means, it's important for contractors to be aware of this so-called harsh rule. Of course, WCC's story might have had a happy ending had the company taken some measures to prevent the potential file size problem. For one thing, WCC could have checked with the VA during the proposal stage to determine whether there were any file size limits. WCC also could have submitted its proposal a day earlier instead of trying to do so 40 minutes before the deadline. As the GAO's decision demonstrates for commercial item solicitations containing that clause, FAR 52.212-1, the agency can accept an otherwise late electronically submitted proposal, but only if the proposal was submitted the prior working day or earlier. WCC, like many offers, waited until the last minute, or very close to it anyway, to submit its proposal. By waiting so close to the deadline, WCC not only decreased its odds of actually reaching the contracting officer or contracting specialist to confirm receipt of its proposal, but it essentially waived the late proposal exception provided by FAR 52212-1F.